We keep hearing from companies that they want to be data driven. I want to be data driven. Understandably so, because those that are already data driven have a positive track record to better understand their customers, better satisfy their customers' needs, achieving efficiencies in their operations and being a step ahead of their competition. So companies are investing a lot in acquiring data, using the top technologies and recruiting the top data analysts and data scientists. But some of the same companies still rarely use data as a support for decision making. Why? Well, a lot is also because of company's culture. So here are five pieces of advice to create a data-driven culture. If you're new to the Lights on Data channel, please don't forget to subscribe. This channel aims to provide simple, fun, and engaging, as well as thorough explanations, teachings, and advice on data management and data governance area. Today's topic is about the five pieces of advice to create a data-driven culture. Please stay until the end, as I've reserved the last two to be the most important ones to follow. So let's start the countdown. Number five, enable data accessibility. Think of how you're feeling when you're hungry. And to be honest, I am a little bit hungry right now. I'm doing this intermittent fasting right now, so I haven't had dinner. Anyhow, I'm babbling, maybe because I haven't eaten. So remember when you're feeling when you're hungry, right? You have the appetite for food and there's a bit of excitement and enthusiasm related to, to that feeling. Because to be honest, for those of us that are lucky, we know that we'll get to eat and satisfy that hunger, that need, that appetite. But if you don't satisfy it, you become hangry. You become irritated, worried, and desperate. And that's how a lot of people in different parts of the business feel as they struggle to obtain even the most basic data. And data democratization is an ongoing challenge, even for those that are all for it. Starved of data and information, data scientists and data analysts don't do a great deal of analysis, but rather they type a lot of emails, they phone a lot of people, they even fill out a lot of forms and jump through hoops to access the data that they need. In this situation, it's really impossible for a data-driven culture to take place, let alone flourish. As I mentioned, enabling data democratization is a challenge, but let's try not to boil the ocean. Just start somewhere. Focus on one data domain and start providing access to a data layer that holds that domain's most relevant measures. Measures that data professionals, data stewards, and analysts can tap into and start solving their challenges. Then start building on it and expand to other measures, other dimensions and domains. I know it's not easy, but that's why the next piece of advice is crucial. So at number four, we have the top-down support, the message the drive and the support of a data-driven culture needs to come from the top. Just like the conductor of the orchestra gives a tone for the other musicians to follow, so should the top-level executives give that tone and have everyone tune in into a data-driven culture mindset. It really needs to start at the highest level with the C-level executives, it needs to be supported by the VP level and really just trickle down and be sustained at every level of the org chart. You know, sure, the drive can start from the bottom up as well. In fact, I think that the appetite needs to be at all levels, but it will never turn into a data-driven culture if the support does not come from the top as well. Top level managers need to set the expectation that decisions must be anchored in data. Does this sound novel? Well, it shouldn't be. I mean, top managers need to set that norm, that this is the normal expectation, that this is the status quo. With top-down support, data accessibility also becomes more and more of a realistic goal to be accomplished. Number three, invest in data literacy. Companies really invest in training for their employees. I mean, not all, but out of those that are investing, a lot focus on the software. And yes, that's important. You need to know how to use the tools that you're given. Though 
One would also say that a great product design does not require the need to be trained for how to using that product. But I diverge. I think it's that hunger. The bottom line is that a lot missed the opportunity and the need to invest in data literacy, which at the core would cover the importance of data, data stewardship responsibilities, the fact that data quality is everyone's responsibility, as I often point out, and then basic analytical skills and data visualization skills, awareness of data privacy and security, and how to care for, how to steward, how to protect the data as it relates to the role that we are in. Then, of course, there should be more specific training for specific roles. I mean, metadata management, best practices for IT, statistics for data scientists, data storytelling for the business intelligence professionals, analysis techniques for the business and data analysts, and so on. We are down to the last two pieces of advice on how to create a data-driven culture. Please click the like button if you've enjoyed the video so far, and please subscribe if you haven't done so already. So the second to last advice is to enable metadata management tools. Some of the biggest complaints from those that work with data and those that consume data revolve around metadata management. It can all come down to one question. What does this mean? What does this data mean? Tell me. When a developer looks at a table, a database table that is, not this table. Okay, you know what I mean. See, it's my hunger again. I'm thinking of eating tables. I'm thinking of tables that you're eating from. Okay, so when a developer looks at a table, it often wonders what that table holds. They are asking what are the particulars of a specific column, what relationships does it have with others, what are its rules and restrictions. You do need a data dictionary for each database, each system, in order to really help with that. But that's just about the technical metadata. There's even more confusion around business metadata. What does CPC mean? How do you calculate customer retention rate? How do you define customer? There can be multiple answers for these questions in an environment without a well-managed business glossary to provide the clarity, the trust, and the consensus over all these business terms. Not to mention that the data analyst, the data scientist, also need a data catalog to access curated and well-maintained data for their projects and also be able to learn more about those definitions. And those definitions cover both technical and business metadata, but also provide the data lineage, rules, and the context. You need good metadata management tools to help the organization produce, store, manage, and disseminate technical and business metadata. And here's the last one the one of the most important pieces of advice to create a data-driven culture. Don't sequester your data scientists. Data scientists and data analysts are often sequestered within a company and they are stuck to one department. The result? They know too little about the business area that they work on a project for and of course the other way around. I mean, too many assumptions are made as a result by both parties and so the deliverables are not optimal. Analytics can really provide value if it operates separately from the rest of the business. So this challenge can be addressed in two ways. The first tactic is to stop treating the data analytics as a service to the business, but as a partnership between the two. This different mindset opens a new way of collaboration between the business and analytics. They both start to learn the information and knowledge that is needed for each one to contribute their part to the project. Another tactic is to establish a center of excellence that really trains business roles on data analysis and data science concepts and techniques. These roles start to have a dotted line relationships to the center of excellence that also ensures a collaboration with full-time data analysts and scientists for any of the heavy lifting or more difficult challenges. But the people in these business functions, the ones that have a dotted line into the center of excellence, don't need to be reborn as machine learning engineers, but they also need to take a step forward in expanding their data analytical skills in order to enable that data-driven culture. We need to remember that data is necessary to back up hypotheses and hunches and give managers the confidence to jump into new areas and new processes without really taking that 
leap of faith. But simply aspiring to be data-driven is not enough. To be data-driven, companies need to have a data-driven culture. And they can do that by following the pieces of advice I've offered so far. What advice do you have? Are you part of a data-driven culture? Please let me know in the comments below. Until next week, thank you so much for watching.